Now coming up to 23 minutes past eight. Before you start to swat and get anxious, we are travelling for this week's Nature Notes to Cornwall to hear the sound of much needed good news for our native bees. News that comes from Sir Tim Smith, who is co-founder of the Lost Gardens of Heligan in Cornwall. Morning to you. Good morning. And what is this news? Well, the, the, the good news is that uh, we are getting very active in protecting our British native black bee, the European black honeybee, which um, was in the 1920s thought to have gone virtually extinct and then populations have been found and uh, we're now trying to create reserves for them because they're far better uh, uh, adapted to the UK than the imports that have swamped us over the last few years. People may not know that vast numbers of uh, bees are imported. Well, yes, uh, about somewhere between 15,500 and 19,000 uh, queens are imported from predominantly Italy every year. Um, and uh, this isn't a, a Brexit comment, but the problem is with the major uh, honey, hun honeybee queens from the continent, which are uh, the Alpine ones and the Italian ones, is that they're a bit soft. Um, they, Immigrant it, bees aren't uh, up to the job, you say? No, I've, you've got to say, they, they're, 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 they're fancy dance and they like the sunshine and what happens is they, they breed a lot but they come over to the UK and um, then the first sign of bad weather and they get sulky and what happens is that although they uh, create very large broods uh, they then start to not fly about and of course in our springs our springs of course are notoriously um, uh, bits of sun bits of rain and at the time that they're supposed to be feeding their brood they 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 sort of sulk inside when it when it's a bit windy and blowy uh, and their broods die so what do you do or what will you do at the Heligan to, to make sure you've got hardier native bees in bigger numbers well we've got some uh, uh, already and and uh, there are bees uh, uh, black bees uh, uh, all over britain in various places we've partnered up what's unusual is we've partnered up uh, with Northern Ireland, Wales, uh, Scotland and in, in our own patch with the University of Plymouth uh, to identify exactly where the populations are, there aren't that many but where they are, and then to create reserves which are defendable uh, The uh, what you're trying to do is to stop uh, the population being bred into insipidity. That's a funny word to use. Um, but the, the thing is that the, the, the our black bees are, are being, if you like, bred out and weakened, uh, and we need to create strongholds. So so when uh, you say defensible, I'm intrigued, Tim. What, what you're saying is you need populations that are, you're not going to be sort of weakened by the arrival of outsiders. Uh, absolutely. Actually, that, that's that's what we're trying to do. Uh, the first what the first uh, reserve in Britain was out on the Rame Head, which you probably know, Mount Edgecombe, what, just as you get into Cornwall, uh, which isn't brilliantly defensible, but there's a huge number of uh, very very uh, uh, passionate landowners who put their land together. But because of the wind direction and because of where you are, just at the gateway into Cornwall, it's not quite as defendable as you'd like. So Heligan is far better, uh, and also it's a good place uh, to promote it because. Uh, we have 350,000 people a year coming, many of them very interested in rare breeds because we have a rare breed park there. And one of the arguments we'll be wanting to make, and I'm sure you'd make the same one, uh, is that in an age of big this, big that, big the other, uh, we've tended for reasons of agricultural productivity uh, to go for species that aren't necessarily brilliantly adapted but give us big heavy mm -hmm. crops that aren't absolutely suited to the landscape. Um, and these bees are perfect for us to be promoting at Heligan. And uh, what we're hoping to do then is to get the uh, beekeepers and landowners in various other parts of uh, Cornwall and then further afield to club together to specialise. Now, Sir Tim, I should tell you, I'm more nervous about this interview than any I've done since joining the programme because I am sat next to the world authority on bees, the president of the Global Bee Federation <laughs> or some such organisation. I, mean, I wish I was, but Tim, you'll be horrified. I've got a confession to make because before I realised about all the threats to British black bees, I imported an Italian queen bee. I'm sorry. Mm. I, and I have to say, she was lovely, so easy to handle, and the, the bees that from her were, were fantastic. But you're right, they couldn't handle the British climate, and they all died out. 
I know, I know. I, I, I mean, the, tr- the trouble is, when you are, are, are for something, we live in a culture where you're supposed to then also be against other things. And I, 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 I'm quite sure that some of the bees are really nice. Yes. I don't want to be anti-Italian and alpine. <laughs> um, but our own bees are great. And, <laughs> and it's, uh, I'm delighted, you know, we have you as a champion. Um, <laughs> okay. Because uh, am I allowed to say that you're going to open the reserve? Well, I'm not sure oh. I am going to be able to open the reserve, so okay. perhaps you shouldn't. We'll, but, put, but, your, but, we'll, we'll put your secretaries we'll on to each other later. We'll, we'll, we'll take this off, Ed. We Thank have you to move on. on. I'm so sorry. No, I, that, was, that was most indiscreet of me. I, I, I got all oh, I didn't say a word. So, Tim Smith, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You go to the Lost Gardens of Heligan in Cornwall. Very patiently waiting here, not buzzing at all. Here's...